Welcome to the MAPES IDV collection. I'm Brian MAPES. Here we'll learn to add a new display to a template bundle. In general, there are three steps to adding a nice new display in the IDV. One, connect to the data set. Two, select a field to display and display it. Three, make the display legible and nice with better contours, colors, and labels. These correspond to the three tabs in the IDV's dashboard. One, two, and three. If you use a template, enough data sets may already be connected and available to you. You just might want to plot some new fields. If you do step two well enough, display a field, there isn't so much work needed in step three to, fi to fix it up. So step two is really the heart of everything. By the way, if you closed your dashboard, you can always get it back by clicking this game controller icon in the upper left corner. In fact, the upper left corner of the main window is a crucial area for so many common tasks. File menu to save your work as a bundle so you don't lose it. Calling up the dashboard with the game controller. Using the blue top cube to restore a centered top view when you get a little twisted around. And view, capture, images or movies. They're all in this area. But back to 1, 2, 3 in the dashboard. Step 1, connecting a data set. Here we have options, file, URL, catalogs. Catalogs are a powerful way to discover data. One thing you'll find in the MAPES collection is my own catalog line. Unidata's catalog is linked here on my list, or is the second choice in the menu. In the catalog view of the MAPES IDV collection, some of my utilities can help you, like year-by-year -year files that aggregate the variables of the wonderful 1871 to present 20th century reanalysis and the classic NCEP1 reanalysis. The 20th century analysis is an ensemble reanalysis, so there's always a spread, a measure of uncertainty, along with the ensemble mean. It was too slow to make these files act like one big time series and access them across the years through the time driver. Instead, you have to pick your year in the catalog and then use the time driver within the year. Be careful if you pick the wrong year, you'll get displays of January 1 or December 31 data, since IDV always displays the closest available time. The NOAA CFS reanalysis, although it's on a web server, is only available hour by hour in day by day folders, so there's no way to use the time driver at all, and I'm sad it's missing from the MAPES IDV collection for now. The NASA MERA reanalysis is great. The whole modern era since 1979 is like one big virtual time series, and I've included that in the MAPES IDV favorites folder here. Dialing up a case study of any time is as easy as booking a flight using the time driver with these super aggregated data sets. Remember, one, two, three to create a new field, and two is the most important. So let's look at step two, selecting a field. Here are all the currently connected data sources, and you can see how each one has its fields. Don't forget the derived fields and the formulas, which you can apply to any field. I like the time accumulation formula, which I apply to precipitation often. But you can also use that to see how any time average signature, like a climatological feature, emerges from the daily means and the monthly means that go into that long-term average. Once you know what type of field you want to see, how do you want to see it? This is the display type. Contours are familiar. Color planned, color filled plan view means these square colored pixels, like our surface temperatures. You have to think, what question about the data are you trying to address? What display might show you that most clearly? The thinking is a crucial step in deciding what to do here. In my template approach, you always have to remember to match the time driver. Always, always, always match the time driver. It's like a game of Simon Says. Don't forget to match the time driver. Otherwise, you create a data request for hundreds of time levels. Ha ha, you have to kill your IDV and start over, and you probably lost your work, since you probably forgot to save recently. It's not ha ha, it's boo hoo, and I've cried it many times. I always hated Simon Says as a kid. Also, you might want to subset levels here, like excluding the stratosphere. And you can subset a region 
or use the stride, which means take every other point, or every third grid point, to reduce the data volume. Actually, it's better to do that in another way, which I'll show you momentarily, so let's skip these for now. When you think you're ready, you could click Create Display. But remember, one, two, three. And step three is adjusting your displays for legibility. That's kind of tedious sometimes, so before we leave step two, please notice that there are MAPES suggestions in the settings here as part of the MAPES IDV collection. Sometimes these might save you a step or offer sophisticated displays like transparent overlays that are tricky to create. These are a work in progress, but again, the MAPES IDV collection self-updates every time you launch, so they'll get better with time as I get better at making them. Okay, one, two, three, time for number three. Suppose you've created a display and you want to adjust it. Just click its legend, which is a blue link, and you can adjust the contours, the colors, and other choices. This is purely a game of visual outputs, so your experimentation is menus to eyeballs, adjusting to your tastes. Get used to reading the words carefully. Remember, this was set up by thoughtful craftsmen who built the system for their convenience, so the choices and naming have all been carefully considered over many years. It's complicated, but only to a necessary or sensible degree. Take the time to study it thoughtfully, and you'll get better and better at this. Notice especially the vertical position for two-dimensional displays that, that aren't associated with a single atmospheric level, like the precipitable water, for instance. Two display layers shouldn't be put at the same vertical position, or on some computers, you'll see ugly mixtures of them. So you have to choose where in the vertical stack each display should go. I have to mention one gotcha. Sometimes your displays don't show up because they are below a transparent layer in three-dimensional height space, but were created after that transparent layer. In a kind of mind-stretching sense, they are below the transparent, la transparent layer, but not behind it. They're in front of it because they were created after it. So in order to see a newly created display that's at the bottom of the stack in height, sometimes you have to use right-click, view, bring to front on all the transparent layers one by one in bottom to top order that are above it. See if you can imagine how I use this trick to make the model clouds hidden whenever the satellite clouds are available and then visible when the satellite disappears. So the jump from observation to forecasts is nice and clear. If you're thinking of building your own displays now, it's time for some general strategy advice. Always work with data in a small patch at just one time. You can expand space and time coverage later, after you get the look you want. With a small patch, you can play with display choices very quickly. Create displays, and then trash them and create new ones, or create them again. Happily, the time driver settings are remembered as you do this, so the Simon, game, Simon Says game isn't quite so dangerous as it appears. When you want to restrict your data to a small patch for, for tuning like that, or upgrade to a larger patch later for big displays, or when you want to move an existing regional bundle you find in my collection to another part of the world, you just right-click Dataset, Properties, and find the Spatial Subset tab. When you subset up here at dataset level, instead of field by field, it applies automatically to all the displays of all the fields from that dataset. So if you check reload displays, you can have the IDV start remaking all the displays at once, and then go stretch your legs while it loads. When you get a case study you like, either in current data or past archives, you can save it as a .z IDV file with the data zipped in with the code. This will take a long time to do, several minutes, so always save a .xidv version first, the code only. That's quick, and it allows you to get back to your same state if something goes wrong during the longer save process for the zidv. Finally, after you make sure your case is just how you like it, go ahead and save your zidv file. When you do, though, say goodbye to this IDV session. Nothing else can be done while the IDV rereads all the data creates the NetCDF files, and zips up the package. I also find that saving the ZIDV files garbles my subsetting options sometimes, and I've learned the hard way to relaunch a fresh IDV for safety after every ZIDV save. But for all the trouble, a ZIDV file is a treasure. 
a self-contained file with all the data sets as NetCDF files and all the code needed to rebuild your data displays and even your viewpoint at the moment you did the saving, all in one nutshell. If you want to make these treasures and want to share them, contact me. Let's add them to the MAPES IDV collection. I have lots of disk space. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to the IDV and the MAPES collection. I hope lots of people will enjoy the easy goodies, like my favorite current weather loops, and classroom specimens for teaching, and zipped up case studies. Fewer of you will use the templates with one time level, and then adjust the time driver to make your own loop lengths, or to select past case studies. Even fewer of you will go on to add displays and make your own bundles and learn to use the IDV at a detailed level. But the IDV has something for everyone, not just the advanced craftsmen. To learn more, Unidata has multi-day trainings every summer, whose tutor and the tutorial of those you can work through on your own if you like. They also have some screencasts on their webpage or on their YouTube channel. Huge thanks to Unidata for their great free software systems that make all this possible. It's a great vision of sharing for science. Feel free to contact me anytime here. Bye for now.